Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of Conversation with Vibration. I am your host, Mike Boblet. The very first guest of this podcast is the owner of an award-winning brewery that won gold for lager and porter at the 2019 Best of Craft Beer Awards and bronze for their beer Rainmaker at the 2019 North Carolina Brewers Cup. This brewery located at 27 Buxton Avenue is the second oldest in Asheville and is also the original downtown tap room here. You can also visit them at their new tap room, The Dweller, that recently opened this fall in the heart of downtown Asheville at 10 North Market Street. Please welcome Dennis, the owner of Green Man Brewery. How's it going? Hello, great, good to be here. Um, welcome to Green Man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, how, how long have you been in business? Green Man has been in Asheville since 1997. Okay. Wow. We are the second oldest brewery in town behind Highland. We started in 1994, and we are one of the um, oldest standing breweries in North Carolina. Uh, I think we're the seventh or eighth, something like that. Been at, been at it a long time. We're sitting in the Green Mansion, which this building was constructed from the ground up and opened in 2006. Okay. And serves as our tasting room and uh, also a uh, packaging facility. You can hear the bottles clanking in the background. There. <laughs> so we're bottling today. Yeah, it's an awesome building. Thank you. Got a chance to walk through it a little bit. It's. Um, it was a labor of love and pretty awesome. My wife had a big hand in designing the, the aesthetics of the place and the layout. And three and a half years now, it's been a big boost to our business. And uh, it's been really great. Um, so yeah, 1997. The world was very different way back then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I've been in the business uh, personally for a really long time. Okay. It's really all I've ever done on the distribution side for the first 20 plus years and my family and I moved here to Asheville about 12 years ago and uh, I bought Green Man from the founders in 2010. Okay. Yeah. But the founders were, were in your family? No. Oh, no. it was a different family. No, good question. Uh, the founders are Joe and Joan who own Jack of the Wood Pub, which is just up the street. Okay. And that's where it started way oh. back in the day. Yeah. That's awesome. I wish I had some cool pictures or something I could show you, but I don't have any myself. <laughs> I've been after them for a long time to try to get some cool historical, you know, facts and photos, but the brewery has a long-standing history here in Asheville, and it's been kind of a who's who throughout the years of, of brewers coming and going, and some guys going off starting their own breweries or being a big part of another brewery. So Green Man has a, a long history here in Asheville in the brewing scene. In fact, the tap room next door, Dirty Jack's, the old garage, I don't know if you noticed it on your way in, was the first brewery tasting room in Asheville. Oh, really? That's a fact. And we think one of the first brewery tasting rooms in the Carolinas and the Southeast, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just kind of cool, kind of cool story there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you kind of mentioned how you got started. You've been you've been doing this pretty much your whole life. I have been on on the distribution side okay. of, of the beer industry. Uh, my family had a beer distributorship that was sold, and that's when we moved here to Asheville. And so while not a brewer or being in the brewery industry brewing industry for for 30 plus years. I've been in the beer industry for that long. Wow. And uh, brewing beer is very different than selling, than distributing it. Yeah. It's a hard business. Especially if you decide to distribute or go into bottles and cans and kegs like we do most guys. A lot of breweries these days are just doing kegs. Okay. Maybe they venture into cans, but a lot of breweries, the smaller guys are just doing kegs and, and selling over the bar and getting minimal distribution around town. Yeah, I would imagine there's a lot that goes into that. When you decide to go into cans and bottles, there is a lot that goes into it. If you look out that window, which you can't, they, the garage doors up, you usually can see out there, <laughs> you saw all the equipment when you came in. Yeah. It's hard, and it's so competitive these days. Um, we were 
one of the first breweries to package in Asheville behind Highland, I believe we were this, maybe Asheville Brewery was a little bit before us with their cans, but it was around 2013 when we started bottling for the first time, putting our beer into uh, a real package that people could buy at a store, you know, yeah. and uh, that was a big deal. But that was 2013, that was six years ago, almost seven years ago now, and the world was very different, you know, what was happening for many years was consumer demand was much higher than supply. So right. uh, Green Man, along with so many other breweries around here, really benefited from that. Couldn't make it fast enough. Right, right. You know? And that was a great problem to have. And um, so something happened around 2016 since there's just been such a proliferation of breweries and competition. Right. So that's no longer the case and I actually feel like it's flipped to be the opposite of that and that is supply is much higher than demand. Right. Which creates a lot of problems in the market. Like, yeah. Like old beer. I can see that because I, I used to try to try as many beers as I could, as mm -hmm. many breweries and it got to the point where it's just impossible. It's so much, yeah. It's really, it's really gotten to be a, a bit much. But uh, I love craft beer. I've been a passionate craft beer guy for a long time, and I would never, I would never want to be negative about our industry because there's so much competition. That's a good thing for the consumer. Yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, the dweller. We opened a new, that's a good segue there because we talk about the saturation in the market. Yeah. And what I, what I mean is bars and restaurants, convenience stores and grocery stores, there's so much variety. Right. And what breweries are finding out and discovering and learning is that having the tap room business, folks coming to your tap rooms and buying a pint and maybe a shirt on the way out the door is a huge, um, part of the success factor to be successful. Because if we didn't have our tap rooms today, I'm, I'm not sure what this looks like. Okay. So talking about the dweller is actually Green Man's third tap room, technically okay. fourth, because we're sitting here, there's one up here and one downstairs, but technically right. third location here in Asheville. Wow. If you count Dirty Jacks just up the street. Okay, yeah. Where we are now, and the Dweller is a half a mile that way in downtown on Market Street. It is a great little space that we, it kind of came to us, and it's been open about a month, and it's a small little pub that's been really great, and it's a cute little place that we're seeing growth every week, and hopefully that's continues great. to grow, and at the end of the day, it looks like it's going to be catering more towards the locals, which seem very grateful. Guys getting off work, or guys, guys and gals that live around there, right. that are happy to have a, a local pub instead of a kind of a tourist trap type place. Right. But yeah, the best part, of Asheville is a huge. Oh my gosh, spot. the tourism that comes through here is insane. If you get a chance to come here on a Saturday at four o'clock, and just sit down there and watch the comings and goings of the tourists. Wow, it's crazy. So the Dweller and Dirty Jacks too, I think really cater to the locals. That's and great. I think they appreciate it. And we certainly appreciate them. And it gives them more access to our beer. Right. Which we think would make pretty good beer. So how many different uh, breweries do you, do you typically carry in, in those? Just ours. Oh, it's, ju it's yeah. still just yours. Just Green okay. Man Beer. That, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Just, just Green Man Beer. So you can go to the Dweller and have 12 different Green Man beers. You can have 16 here at our places here on, on Buxton Avenue. And, you know, if, if someone wanted to get a Green Man around town, they'd, they'd usually just have one. Right. <laughs> or two, if we're lucky. <laughs> um, so that's been really great. And I hope that the Dweller continues to grow and, and I hope that the locals dig it. That's what it's about. Yeah, that's awesome. Um. So th this next question I had, you, you kind of already touched on, but how did you become so passionate about beer? You know, it's something that you've kind of just... Well, yeah, I've been kind of a beer guy since I was uh, a teenager. 
okay. in the family business and been around it my whole life to 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 a fault almost. <laughs> you know, I had one of the baddest uh, beer can and bottle collections uh, you've ever seen by the time I was 13 years old. Yeah. So I've always been very passionate about beer and it's been such a big part of my life but more craft beer started for me about 15 years ago as a sam adams distributor okay that really got me into it and uh, then we later years became a distributor of brands like dogfish head and bells and got to know those guys and those breweries intimately and it just really became a passion of mine yeah that's to bring, awesome to bring me to where i am here today I'm sure there's a ton of great people in the industry. There are, yeah. There's the, Sam Caligione from Dogfish has a great quote. This is the craft beer industry is 99% asshole free, you know, and I believe that to be pretty true. Although, as it gets more and more competitive, the, the asshole factor seems to come out in some guys a little more than others. You know? <laughs> uh, what do you love about being a part of this community here in Nashville? Oh, uh, there's so many great things about the community of Asheville and the mountains um, but it's really been a lot of fun to be a part of the uh, brewing industry here that is so popular and to see the the local support but the tourists that come here and I think a, a great percentage you can't really know the percentage but people that come here just to visit breweries okay you know yeah. it's a real thing I've noticed there's a there's a ton of them here. They just come for the brewery, brewcation or you know there's a term for it. There's tour companies that cater to this. There's um, so they like to come to Asheville, from wherever they are, and they like to get a hotel, and park the car, and it's pedestrian. They like to walk around and see all the different breweries and experience the different scenes and beers, and it's just really a cool thing. To be yeah. a part of that, you know, and that's really a recent phenomenon. That's no more than five years that's been going on. Okay. Maybe four. Probably now five years, maybe six, maybe. But that wasn't a thing <laughs> back when I bought this place. There wasn't uh, a whole lot of traffic coming into Dirty Jacks up the street. It was just really the locals. And something happened. Uh, I want to say like 2014, 15. They started coming. It was, wow. wow, where are these people coming from, you know? And then a big thing happened along the way there. A um, little brand called Wicked Week came about. But more so, I think it was Sierra Nevada and New Belgium, and to a lesser extent, Oscar Blues, because they're 45 minutes away. Okay. Opened up shop here. Right. You know, and that was a big deal. That was a really big deal for Asheville because I think it really solidifies and legitimizes the scene here, which is is pretty heavy duty scene here in the brewing scene in Asheville. It's probably arguably the best in the entire east east of the Mississippi and the whole United States. All in one location. I, I mean, there's people that would argue some parts of Grand Rapids, Michigan, or or Austin, Texas, if that's east of the Mississippi. I'm not sure probably but um, the Northeast is great uh, you know the New England hazy movement is a big thing now and that's New England but arguably Asheville is the legitimate beer destination of the East Coast I would argue that yeah that's awesome yeah it's cool to be a part of that yeah definitely um, so I saw on your Instagram that you recently uh, released, uh, I don't know if you, you already had this beer, the Barley's Brown. Yeah, it just released over the weekend. Okay. Um, that's part of our charity series that we've been doing um, recently started this year. Barley's my dog. He's he's not here, but we had a... Um, so he's the one on the can? Yeah. Okay. A, so we're not innovating having a dog on a label. <laughs> I mean, that's been done many times. Right. But Barley's uh, a great... He's just a great dog. He's the brewery dog. But we took it a step further, and I think the beer is really awesome. Kyle made a great brown ale. But um, 
we partnered with Brother Wolf, who's a local, um, one of the local uh, rescue, you know, places for dogs and cats. Right. And on Saturday, they had an adoption day, and it was a lot of people here. And uh, Barley now has a, a baby brother and a baby sister, Porter, Porter and Hazy. <laughs> And they're right outside the door there, sleeping. Thankfully, because it would be really loud if they weren't. <laughs> so we took two of the puppies, too. That's awesome. But um, we're going to donate the proceeds to, to Brother Wolf from that beer. And um, looking for that to be an annual kind of charity beer thing that we do, along with some other charities that we do throughout the year. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I really like the, the idea of that. Yeah, it's cool. And... Um, who doesn't love dogs? Dogs and beer. I mean, right. I think the Green Man is arguably one of the most dog-friendly places in Asheville as well for a long time. Dirty Jacks has been a dog haven forever. Right. Yeah. Along with some other new stuff, um, we've got the Demon Dweller, which is our barrel-aged Imperial Stout. That's, that's a fan favorite that's available still. And um, I'll mention our Hazy Homage series, which um, you can see some of these posters. Um, in front of you there, start, about a year ago we started this um, Hazy IPA series of beers inspired by our favorite music and bands. And we've done uh, seven now. And um, coming up soon will be a, uh, I'm giving it away I guess, uh, a tool, sort of subtle tool reference, uh, Hazy IPA coming out in a couple of weeks called Void of Haze. Oh, nice. and, the, and the label is really amazing. We finally have a highly talented guy on, on, on staff that's been making our labels. And um, he's only been here a few weeks, but he's a big tool fan and he, he made this one. So look for that. It's really, really impressive looking uh, art. And we know the beer will be great too. So that'll be our nice. Hazy Homage number seven or eight. To, first one was Van Hazy, which was a Van Halen. Second one was Guns N' Roses, Cold November A's, Did Iron Maiden, The Police. Um, yeah, that's cool. What else do we do? Just, we've got one on tap right now called Haze Against the Machine, a rage <laughs> reference, obviously. Yeah. And then my favorite one was the uh, Hazy Cosmic Jive, which was that silver can right there. That's a David Bowie. Nice. That's a David Bowie lyric from Starman. He's got the lightning bolt, so. That's one of the cool things about our brand of Green Man being that face. We can sort of uh, give him different looks and feels and iterations and do fun things with him. Right, right. And still be consistent with our branding, which is kind of the cool thing that we have here at Green Man. So yeah, that got about covers the new stuff coming down the pike. Of okay. course, you can always get our flagship beers, IPA, ESB Porter, which are the old standby fan favorites forever, long-standing go to beers and uh, those are in bottles and then our cans are Wayfarer IPA which is an American IPA uh, Trickster IPA and our lager in cans so we have six really six and a half with tart berry which is our um, fruited Berliner Weiss that we offer all year round okay and cans bottles cakes but we always have something cool coming out too that's awesome yeah I think it works um, so I think I'll jump down to this one. Where, where all do you distribute to? Where can everybody find your beer? At? Well, that's a great question. You know, distribution has gotten so crazy out there, but we are in seven states now. Okay. Um, Florida. We export into Florida. I always joke around. Florida is <laughs> just a whole different planet. But we do uh, distribute to Florida, Georgia, Carolinas, uh, Virginia. Mississippi, um, and we are opening Alabama next year. Oh, nice. Yep. So I hope I didn't skip anybody there. Um, did I say Tennessee? Tennessee. Okay. Okay. In <laughs> yeah. Tennessee. Our first, um, first or second outside of South Carolina. Tennessee was our third state that we opened. Um, and outside of that, I don't think that we'll be opening any new states anytime soon. Never say never, but we certainly don't have any plans to. Okay. That's a big footprint. Yeah, definitely. A lot of territory to cover, you know. Um, 
and, and selling your beer through distributors it's getting harder and harder with all the competition and, and all the things that they have to deal with and getting some of these cool things we just talked about like the void of haze hazy beer that we're excited about getting that into getting that beer into you know knoxville tennessee and, and fort lauderdale florida and, and, and richmond virginia and all these places it becomes challenging because these people see it on our social, our fans see it on social media and they want it. Right. And they're wherever they are. And if they're within our footprint, they're, like, they're, they're contacting us. Hey man, I'm in Tampa, Florida. How can I get that for the haze? Oh, you know, I gotta, you know it's, it, it's challenging to get it down there. And we only make so much of it. Right. Yeah, that so, makes sense. A good excuse to come to Asheville and come to Green Man. Right. Yeah. Your last question there is about social media that's that's exactly what i'm talking about is everything is is instagram twitter okay. facebook to an extent okay youtube yeah i noticed you're you're real heavy on instagram we are i think pretty good I, I think we're always striving to sharpen that up so it looks visually compelling and the content is you know relevant that's important Right. Keeping the website looking cool because there's so much competition. People are, it's got to grab their attention. Right. right. And, and I think that the Green Man brand does that. And we're always striving to make it more relevant, compelling, and visually great. And because um, we think our beer is really good. And we always strive to make great beer because that's, that's the, the start of everything. It starts with the beer. You can't, right. If you don't have great beer, then what are you doing, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so what all do you do for marketing? Is it mainly social media or do you, I do think you branch out and do some other stuff? I think that's a big extent of it. We try to um, put the word out and be a press release or something if we're doing something cool like opening the dweller. We try to do a big splash for that. Right. And it was on the news and in the local trades. Press released and different beer publications, etc. But... We don't really advertise or spend money on advertising or print or you certainly want to see a Green Man commercial on TV. Right. It's too cost prohibitive and it's just not really something we would do. You right. know? So I think it's heavily social media driven for sure. Okay. Yeah. So do you have somebody in house that, that handles all of that for you? Right now we have uh, two guys that kind of take care of that. Um, both their names start with Z. <laughs> um, and they are they are tasked with um, creating the content and making it compelling and cool and but we got to help them too to kind of talk what are we talking about what are we releasing and you know when you have a beer release or a new beer even if it's just on tap for the tap rooms you want to tell people about it and that's the best way to do it right yeah and photography and videography and art. You have to bring all those things together. You, you know, just snapping a pic with your iPhone in these days isn't really... Right. And we do, do we, we certainly have done that. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. you know, you want to you wanna continue to strive to make it as compelling as you can. Right. Yeah. And it seems like they're doing a great job because whenever Thanks, I was man. scrolling through stuff, you, you guys definitely caught my eye. Thank you. Well, that's always great to hear. You always you always think you can do better and want to do better, and I've kind of tried to stay more and more out of that stuff. <laughs> you know? So, but uh, yeah, I guess that's about it that I can think of. Appreciate you coming in. Yeah, I appreciate you sitting down and talking with me. No problem. Uh, yeah, and thanks for listening. Cheers. <laughs>